Good afternoon. Okay, a few things to start off for all of you. <clears throat> okay. Over the last few days, U.S. Agency for International Development Administrator Mark Green has been traveling to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Rwanda, and Somalia. In the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the administrator met with healthcare workers at an Ebola treatment unit, community and local leaders, and response groups working to stop the spread of the disease. In Rwanda, the administrator visited Kigali on June 16th. The uh, administrator Green visited the Kigali Genocide Memorial, paying respect to those who perished more than 25 years ago. He also met with President Kagame to discuss Rwanda's journey to self-reliance and to promote continued collaboration. Lastly, in Somalia today, Administrator Green visited Mogadishu, where he announced the reopening of a USAID mission to Somalia to expand the agency's partnership with the country. The reestablishment of USAID mission in Somalia after closing 28 years ago demonstrates USAID's commitment to helping the Somali people on their journey to self-reliance. The administrator also announced $185 million in humanitarian assistance for the people of Somalia to address life-threatening food insecurity. Next, I have a quick update for you on U.S. foreign assistance to the Northern Triangle countries of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. As you know, in March, the President concluded these countries have not effectively prevented illegal migrants from coming to the United States. At the Secretary's instruction, we continue to implement the President's direction regarding foreign assistance for El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. We completed a review. And previously awarded grants and contracts will continue with current funding. State Department assistance and supportive priorities of the Departments of Justice and Homeland Security priorities to help the Northern Triangle governments take actions that will protect the U.S. border and counter uh, transnational organized crime will also continue. We will not provide new funds for programs in those countries until we are satisfied the Northern Triangle governments are taking concrete actions to reduce the number of illegal migrants coming to the U.S. border. Working with Congress, we will reprogram those funds to other priorities as appropriate. This is consistent with the President's direction and with the recognition that it is critical that there be sufficient political will in these countries to address the problem at its source. As Secretary Pompeo has said, these nations have the responsibility to take care of the immigration problems in their home country. Okay, and one more. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, June 18th, 2019, Secretary Pompeo will visit United States Central Command and the United States Special Operations Command at McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida. There, he will meet with General uh, Kenneth McKenzie, Commander of Central Command, and General Richard Clark, Commander of Special Operations Command, to discuss regional security concerns and ongoing operations. Um, and I will be headed out with the Secretary, um, so I apologize, but this briefing will be a little bit shorter uh, than normal since um, the airplane doesn't wait on me. Right, no. Tomorrow. He, the meetings are tomorrow. But he's leaving today. Yes. All right. Just before I go into Iran, can I just ask you on the Northern Triangle um, mm -hmm. aid, uh, can you, do you have dollar amounts for what, what, to, what the total was that was initially suspended and, how much, and, and the amount that is going to continue now? And if you don't, could you get them? For us? We will get you the exact ones, some, some rough estimates, and I'll make sure to get you the exact dollar figures, is that, <clears throat> excuse me, we will continue to meet our contractual obligations for FY17, and that funding that's already been programmed is around $400 million. Again, we'll get you the, 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 the directive. The $200 million uh, continues to be paused or, or in an escrow. And, and sorry, 17. the $400 million is both the stuff that have been previously awarded and the there was some stuff that you said will continue. Yeah, is so that... there was about, I believe it was 707 was the number of programs in, in a very uh, thorough and comprehensive review um, that we did. And, of course, we said the our, our assistance and support of uh, priority programs from DOJ and Homeland Security um, will continue. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we'll, we'll get you the exact figures, but those are rough estimates of where we are with S FY17. Sorry, 707 was what? Okay, so 707 is the number DOJ. of programs and activities no, writ large. Total. Writ large, 400 right. 400 million of which Ex will continue. In the very extensive review, exactly. Right. <clears throat> and that's an approximate number, obviously. Fair enough, but it sounds like, you know, more than half is going to continue to go, right? Anyway. From um, FY17. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, on Iran. 
Uh, I want to ask a variation of the question I asked you last week, which okay. was w w when um, your ambassador to the IAEA mm -hmm. uh, noted that Iran was potentially or possibly possibly in violation of the JCPOA on mm -hmm. cent advanced centrifuges, and she called for the IAEA, in particular the European parties, mm -hmm. to the deal to can urge Iran to stay in compliance. Mm -hmm. Now today we have a situation where the Iranians say they're going to bust through the limits on uh, their, their low, in, mm -hmm. ura low enriched uranium stockpile and maybe even start enriching up to 20 percent. Do you see, does this administration see any value in Iran staying within the limits outlined by the JCPOA? So I would say that we are unfortunately not surprised by the Iranian announcement. As we've talked quite a bit from this podium, uh, this is a pattern of 40 years of behavior. It's consistent with how the Iranian regime uh, behaves. They did this when we were in the JCPOA, right? They continued to build their missile program. We relieved sanctions. They took American sailors hostage. Um, we have seen no moderating behavior uh, by this regime. And in fact, you know, what we're seeing here, uh, of course, over the, over the past week, um, is uh, constantly threatening to uh, close the Strait of Hormuz. Um, a number of activities, not just the two commercial shipping vessels that we discussed this week, but four other commercial ships. Um, uh, you know, so I think what we're seeing here is, is really a, a, a challenge, not only in the JCPOA, but really a challenge to the international norms on how a country behaves, a challenge to the international norms on uh, freedom of navigation and freedom of the seas. Um, and so we, you know, would, would say to the international community that we should not yield to nuclear extortion by the Iranian regime. Okay. I just want to focus on the nuclear deal, the JCPOA, sure. mm -hmm. and no nothing else. Okay. Just that. Not taking the hostages, not malign mm -hmm. activity, not things that are not covered in the JCPOA. Does the administration believe there is value in Iran staying are continuing to comply with the JCPOA, which the president called the worst deal ever negotiated. Listen, we continue to call on the Iranian regime not to obtain a nuclear weapon, to abide by their commitments to the international community. And I think, you know, it's unfortunate that they've made this announcement today. As I said earlier, it doesn't surprise anybody. Uh, I think this is why the president has often said that the JCPOA needs to be replaced with a with a new and better deal. Um, Iran, as evident by their announcement today, but also their pattern of behavior over the past few years, uh, is keen on expanding, uh, or seems to be keen on expanding their nuclear program, um, and it now wants to exceed these nuclear limits uh, in advance of these so-called sunset clauses. But that suggests that you believe that there is yeah. value in these limits. No, does it not? I mean, we it, call on the if, Iranians not to obtain a nuclear weapon and to, and to abide by the commitments that they've made to the international community. Okay. Nick, uh, Maureen, is the secretary disappointed with the response from the international community so far? You, you said we would like to say to the international community they should not yield to nuclear extortion. Mm -hmm. So. Has, has the administration been disappointed by the response, for one thing, to the attacks on uh, last week and more broadly on uh, viewing the threat and, and the way to respond to Iran? No, not at all. I mean, in fact, I think that we have seen um, the international community and our allies um, step up to condemn this behavior. I mean, this, this clearly what we're seeing in the Strait of Hormuz defies uh, the pattern, the, the tenets that we all hold dear as it relates to freedom of navigation, freedom of the seas. Um, the Secretary has been working, of course, incredibly closely within the government uh, uh, with Secretary, Acting Secretary Shanahan on multiple times uh, working on uh, ensuring that we are, defer excuse me, able to defend our people and our interests. We're, of course, working on the diplomatic solution. Um, while Secretary Shanahan and the team at DOD is focused on our military options to keep our people, our interests, and our allies safe. Over the weekend, as as almost every weekend with the Secretary, he's probably the hard work is, most hardworking person I've ever worked for. The Secretary had a number of calls with the NATO Secretary General, uh, with uh, a Chinese Parliament member, with the Singaporean Foreign Minister, Kuwaiti Foreign Minister, 
UK Foreign Minister, Emirati Foreign Minister, Republic of Korea Foreign Minister, Qatari Foreign Minister. Um, we obviously don't have readouts from every single call uh, that, that he has, but uh, we, have, we have worked incredibly hard uh, with um, our allies uh, on this assessment um, as it relates to Iran's actions last week in the Gulf of Oman. I'm going to mispronounce the name, so I'll get it to you. So What, the title? The position, yeah. It's a Politburo member. Okay. Does, does the Secretary believe that the U.S. strategy, as he laid out when he set forth these 12 demands, I mean, given the tensions only seem to be escalating, does he believe that the U.S. strategy toward Iran is currently working? Our maximum pressure campaign continues, um, and, it, and it will uh, continue to, to be what we pursue. Um, we think it's incredibly unfortunate, of course, uh, the Iranian announcement today, but when we, again, when we look and see what's happened in the region, you know, again, this is, as we always say, I know, 40 years of behavior, but especially over the past few years, when you look at this assessment that the Secretary gave here from this podium, um, I want to reiterate something that he said, because I think it's sort of gotten lost in the, in the media coverage. You know, he said our assessment is based on the intelligence, the weapons used, levels of expertise needed to execute the operation, recent similar Iranian tax on shipping, and of course the fact that no proxy group in the area has the resources and proficiency to act with this high degree of sophistication. So we will continue to uh, work with our allies uh, and work with our international partners who would like to help us deter this Iranian behavior, who would like to help us get them back to the negotiating table, who would like to help us uh, get them to behave like a normal nation. That's the whole goal here. Our demands are not high. Our demands are that they stop terrorizing the region. Thank you. Just to follow on Matt's question, so while there is no new deal uh, between the US and Iran, <laughs> you mm -hmm. ask Iran to abide by the GCPOA even though you left, the US left this deal? When you say you have to abide to their international commitments, you mean to abide to the GCPOA, which the U.S. left? Yeah, we have made it very clear since this president came into office and since the secretary came here that we will not tolerate Iran obtaining a nuclear weapon, full stop. So any actions that they take to get a nuclear weapon will be countered by a maximum pressure campaign by the United States government that continues to this day. There should be no relieving of sanctions for their malign and unacceptable behavior. Rich? Um, Finally, Rich, you I, showed up. I know. Finally got the directions. <laughs> um, the uh, Secretary yesterday, last week when mm -hmm. he was uh, discussing this, he used the phrase that Iran was lashing out. Mm -hmm. um, in the calculation when the administration decided a year ago to withdraw from the nuclear agreement, mm -hmm. did it anticipate or expect that there would be a greater level of this lashing out as a result of the U.S. withdrawal? Well, I think that uh, the United States and the Secretary and this administration in general uh, were well aware of the pattern of behavior um, from the Iranian regime. Anybody who studied them more than a hot minute, who have looked at them for the past 40 years, knows how they will behave. Um, I would love for someone to give me an example of some sort of moderating behavior that the Iranian regime uh, pursued post-JCPOA. Uh, I have no evidence of that. I have evidence of them taking uh, U.S. sailors as hostages. I have evidence of the IRGC having millions, if not billions, of dollars to fund terrorism around the world, to fund Houthis who we saw uh, hit yet another airport in Saudi Arabia where American civilians go through. All of you just saw that report. There's been no moderation. They continue to terrorize. Sure, Saeed. Yeah, thank you. Very quickly, I know I asked you last week about Ambassador Friedman, and you stated... Can we stay on the side no, I know. I called on Saeed, and he can finish. And I'm going to have to go in a few you minutes. Want to stay you can on finish, Saeed. Of, okay, thank you, Morgan. Uh, very quickly, you, yesterday, oh, not, last week you said that uh, what Mr. Friedman said was not U.S. policy. U.S. policy towards annexation. I said that our policy clear. on the West Bank has changed. On the West Bank and Gaza and yes. annexation is very clear. But yesterday, the chief negotiator or the envoy, chief envoy, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Jason Greenblatt, said exactly the same thing. I mean, uh, you know, apparently they did not listen to your statement last week or the position or did not take into consideration the position of this building historically. So do you have any response to that? He said exactly the same thing. He said that he basically supports what Mr. Friedman said. I didn't, I read Jason's uh, comments and I didn't take it the way that you just characterized, but I will reiterate that there is no plan for uh, an annexation by Israel of the West Bank um, that they have presented to us, nor is it under discussion. 
Um, so I'm not going to comment on hypotheticals if and when their government pursues anything to us. We'll be happy to have a have a comment. Sure. Two, I have two, two questions, one on uh, Iran and one on Egypt. Okay. Uh, Iran said today that it had exposed a large uh, cyber espionage network mm -hmm. uh, run by the U.S. Uh, by the CIA. Do you have any? Anything on this? I don't. Thank and you. And on the death of uh, former Egyptian mm -hmm. President uh, Mohamed Morsi, do you have anything? No, uh, we saw we saw that the the death was reported. Oh, no. okay. So, any Ron? Ron, 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 briefly, have you been speaking to Congress about the oil tanker attacks, and in particular, using that as an argument to get lawmakers to back down on their attempts to block the arms sales to Saudi Arabia, because they were still quite determined to try after the briefing last week. I, that's an interesting correlation that you just made. I mean, the secretary, of course, said uh, very publicly whenever uh, he made this decision um, to continue the arms sale, which I would reiterate that those arms sales um, are to many countries in the Middle East, not just Saudi Arabia. We're talking about Jordan. We're talking about the United Arab Emirates and some smaller arms sales in there as well. But one of the justifications was, of course, because of the imminent threats uh, from Iran. Since I have to go in a few minutes, I believe somebody wanted to ask on North Korea, yes. and I yes, want to give them the chance. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, and then, Morgan. And then, the, and then I'll get Matt for the last one, and then we'll yeah, have to go. Sorry. But I will be back. I, I promise. You. Well, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't say According that. According to the uh, Voice of America yesterday, uh, Kim Jong Un said in a secret document, mm -hmm. the North, uh, final goal of the North Korea's uh, uh, nuclear negotiation with the United States is the. Uh, to strengthen North, mm -hmm. North Korea's nuclear power. Therefore, North Korea, Kim Jong-un, is not willing to denuclearization of North Korea. What is your comment? We see a lot of media reports um, like this all the time uh, on whether it's North Korea or other parts of the world. And we certainly don't comment and speculate on every report. Um, but since you asked me, President Trump and the Secretary believe that Chairman Kim will uh, fulfill his commitment to denuclearize, and that remains our policy. But final question, Matt. I just, no, final question, Matt. I just wanted to know if you, well, clear, I, I believe that you would have seen the protests in Hong Kong over the weekend. Yes, sir. That continued despite the fact that mm -hmm. the government put the extradition bill, or at least postponed it for a little bit. Yes. And I'm just wondering uh, what you make of the situation there, and uh, if you believe that the Chinese are um, acting in an appropriate way here. Mm. Um, it certainly was moving, I think, as a citizen and a democracy to watch um, these people, peaceful protests happen uh, in Hong Kong. And we're seeing the people there uh, in Hong Kong, of course, um, demonstrating for their basic rights, for the rights of freedom of speech, for freedom of assembly, all of these things which are enshrined um, into basic law. And so, of course, uh, as we observe these, we continue to call on the Hong Kong government to address the concerns of their public, to consult with local and international stakeholders uh, who may be affected by this proposed amendment, even though I know um, it, of course, has been postponed. Um, the secretary spoke about this a little yesterday on some of the Sunday shows that he was on and said, you know, that we're watching the people of Hong Kong speak about the things that we uh, value. And I think that we have been a, been um, pretty uh, straightforward and transparent from this podium on, on um, our support for these peaceful protesters. I Thank will you. see you all Wednesday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.